Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for Thursday, October 15, 2020. If you'd like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscriber button here in the corner. And do, do uh, like the uh, videos because that really helps us um, grow this channel. And in order to see our newest video, click the bell button uh, to be informed. So we'll start out by looking at the US dollar index. And as you can see, we'd rallied yesterday quite nicely above the 50 moving average. However, today we have fallen quite aggressively. And at the moment, we are just at the 50 moving average. Um, this, of course, has had an effect on most commodities and precious metals because there is a negative correlation between the US dollar index and the commodities and the precious metals. So in this case, you can see that in most uh, commodities today have risen quite uh, uh, well, uh, quite nicely, and also the precious metals. So this is one reason, not just the reason, but it is one of the reasons. If you look at the technical indicators for uh, the for the um, for the for US dollar, we can see that the MACD is trading underneath the signal line. We can also see that the stochastic it has crossed the signal line. It was expected for the US dollar to increase further. However, we broke down. So if we break down below the 50 moving average, we'll go to these uh, lows at the 92.78 and then all the way down to, uh, to 91.77. Uh, um, if we if we rally from here, then we'll go to this level here that it is at the 93.89 and then towards 94.7 and after that towards the 50, uh, that 200 moving average. So, yes, it, it's not the end of the trading day, but the US dollar, it seems like it has, um, it has uh, weakened, it is depreciating, and the technical indicators are fairly mixed. The, you could make the case that the stochastic would cross the signal line, indicating bullish momentum. However, the MACD and the RSI are both fairly bearish for the US dollar index. So if you look at the oil, we can see that oil has rallied. Uh, we broke down um, on Monday towards the 200 moving average. And since then we have rallied. We rallied all the way to 30, $41.24. Uh, and uh, at this point we have pulled back a little bit. However, we are trading above the 50 moving average. If we manage to get an additional, uh, if we manage to rally up towards these highs and break these highs, we could actually see this market go uh, significantly higher. It will also depend on the US dollar index. If that were, if the US dollar would completely break down all the way to 91, uh, then we probably see this market you know, go to these highs of 43.73. After that, to 45 and then to 50. But bear in mind, there is a lower uh, demand for oil due to the slowdown in the world economy, both in Europe, in the United States, not as much in China, but, but, but the rest of the world is doing quite badly. And especially now when there is a, a expected second wave of coronavirus that is hitting um, Industries that um, use a lot of oil, like uh, the travel industry, like airplanes and transportation and so on and so on. So we could see this market fall significantly. We have seen that in recent weeks um, here and also here. The lows, the lows at this point are uh, $36 to $37. If this breaks, then we go all the way to $35 and probably also down towards uh, $30, which is the first Fibonacci retracement. If we take this, if we measure it from the bottom to these highs, then we find the first Fibonacci retracement exactly at the $30 uh, dollar level. So at this point, 
in order to confirm that we are going higher, we need a green candlestick above uh, the 50 moving average. That will give a really good sign that we are going uh, higher in this market. A breakdown from here will see us retest uh, the 200 moving average and a break through the 200 moving average, average will lead us all the way to these uh, price levels. Technical indicators are fairly bullish at this point. Both the MACD, the, the stochastic is about to cross the signal line and the RSI are all looking fairly bullish. So if you look at natural gas. So natural gas, as expected, has started to break down. Um, destination, most likely the 50 moving average. We have been uh, testing the 50 moving average several times in the last few weeks and it is until further uh, it has been the it has been really um, supportive so expect a bounce from the 50 moving average we didn't actually get close to the 50 moving average every single time we get close to it it basically bounced we have a support line we can write it here which which we also have to break through. So this will be significant support. We'll probably get close to this um, uh, this uh, support line here. And if that breaks, then we have the 50 moving average right underneath. So there is, it would be surprising if we uh, broke through the 50 moving average. If that happened, then we'll probably go towards the 200 moving average, but it is not very likely. As long as weather conditions are um, at this point, uh, and we're also heading in into the uh, winter months, that will uh, basically increase uh, the demand for for WTI, no, not natural gas. So don't expect this market to break down anytime soon. We'll have a pullback towards this 50 moving average, and then most likely will bounce. The technical indicators are also becoming more bearish as we have this uh, turnaround here we just got well we got overstretched at this point and every time we get overstretched we have a pullback towards a support level and that gives a uh, opportunity uh, to uh, to uh, get this for better value most likely area you can see it here where we see this pullback is within this area here this was previous support and when this market when these price levels come towards this area here we most likely see a bounce uh, to the upside so if we look at copper so copper has uh, continued to it basically it it uh, rallied in the a little bit in the in the early sessions uh, this morning however this just looks like a market that is exhausted. Um, this was expected to go all the way towards the 200 moving average as we have been trading uh, sideways and it just doesn't seem that there is any momentum in this market. Expectations also for copper from the biggest producers of copper in the world is that will fall towards 2.6, 2.7 level, which is around the area just above the 200 moving average. So it is expected for copper to to um, to decrease, mainly due to the to the demand for copper is not there at the moment. So if we see a breakdown through the 50 moving average. We will go and test these levels at uh, 2.8. A breakdown from there will leave us all the way down towards the uh, 200 moving average. The technical indicators are all looking, well, fairly, uh, fairly bearish at this point. Uh, we can see that the MACD uh, is just about the, the signal line, but the stochastic has crossed the signal line. And the RSI is technically flat at this point. So, so, well, you could imagine that we tested this area almost three times now. And we didn't make, manage to get through. This is probably as far as copper will go at this point. 
Yes. So um, if you look at gold, it has rallied and that is not surprising as you would imagine. There's almost a complete negative correlation between the US dollar index and dollar. If the dollar index falls, then the car, then gold basically rallies. And that is also what we're see, seeing now. We're still trading underneath the 50 moving average. There is no reason to expect uh, gold to rally above the 50 moving average. If we have a complete collapse of the US dollar index, then yes, then that most likely will happen. However, we need to break this trend line. We need to, uh, to uh, break through the 50 moving average and we need to um, get through this entire area which proved to be significant uh, resistant uh, only a few weeks ago. So it's most likely that we'll fall from here towards um, 1850 will be the, mo the first target, then towards 1800, uh, 1800, and then probably towards the 50 moving average. Uh, 1800 is most likely uh, where we will bottom and rally from. So if we look at silver, very similar to gold, but it hasn't rallied as much as gold has. We are trading still underneath the 50 moving average. It is the uh, same case for silver. I expect this market to break down from here before we go higher. The technical indicators are fairly mixed. Stochastic is indicating that we'll go lower. RSI is, uh, is basically flat and the stochastic is pointing to higher uh, price levels. If we were to break through the 50 moving average, then we'll go and retest this area, which was significant resistant in the past, this area here. But I do believe that we'll have a pullback before we go and test, and test these levels. Similar to gold, uh, this market should be uh, in the long run really bullish due to the uh, due to the. Um, uh, monetary policy of the of the uh, of the central banks around the world so yes this we most likely see a pullback before we go higher we are still trading underneath the 50 moving average and every we have tried to rally towards it didn't happen and that is often a sign that we are going lower so if you look at cocoa So Cocoa tried to rally and that did not work. We pulled back really aggressively and this candlestick here is not a good sign for Cocoa. That is an indication that we probably go much lower uh, in with this, with this uh, commodity. So we found this was previous resistant uh, support in the past. We saw that we tested it twice over here and also here back in April and March and May and then also in June. So I do expect when we get towards the 2.258 that we'll bounce from here. That should be significant support. If we were to break through this area, then we'll go all the way down to 2.1 and that is almost certainly that we'll bounce from there. Technical indicators for Cocoa are looking better at this point, but they're still um, really bearish at this point. Look, just look at the MACD. We're way far from the signal line. This will take several days before this will turn around and head to the upside. And that probably coincide that we are going towards uh, this price level here before going sideways and then continue up. We are technically trading underneath the you can see that these are the highest at this point and 2.1 is the lows. We are actually in the middle of the highs and the lows. We mostly go towards this price level and then bounce. Break through this price level, we'll go all the way to the bottom and then we'll bounce. That is most likely what is going to happen. So if you look at platinum. So Platinum still trading in between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. We rallied, broke down, but this market is not going anywhere. 
MACD is flat, we can see that the we can see that the stochastic has turned around, indicating it's bearish momentum. The RSI is also looking fairly bearish, but there's just so much support underneath there that if we were to break through the 200 moving average, we would most likely find massive, get this up, massive support in this area here. You can see we ran it and tested it once um, three weeks ago. And if we were to uh, break through that area, then we'll find additional support area underneath, which we'll bounce from. And after that, we'll go to these lows. Maybe if the world economy shuts down again, or the United States has to close uh, its economy and Europe has to close the economy, maybe we'll see something similar to this. But I would not bet my, the ranch on that happening, uh, mainly due to the fact that most economies at, in, uh, at this point, or societies, have learned to cope better with the disease. So, yeah. So that is highly unlikely that we'll see the same thing happen as we did in, in March and April and so on. A break to the upside. We first have to test the 50 moving average at 911. A breakthrough of 200 average leaves us uh, to uh, leads us to 953, then to, to 978, and then all the way to uh, 1,000. Yes. So we have sugar. So sugar broke down quite significant yesterday. Uh, well, this was on Monday. We rallied a little bit on uh, yesterday and today. We tried to rally and then broke down again. I do believe that we are going further down. We can just see that the MACD is about to cross the signal line. When that happens, we are going further down. This is a market that is, at the moment, it was really overstretched. This helped, this pullback. But I do believe we have to go uh, a few more percentages towards the 50 moving average before we bounce. There's no reason to uh, to short this market at this moment. It's technically waiting for a dip in order to buy uh, and get a better value. We can see that this area here, the top, of that area will most likely be our target when we fall and bounce. And that will also coincide that the, with the 50 moving average, which will move up towards this area here. So technical indicators, they are at the moment looking really bearish. You can see that the R MACD is about to turn around, stochastic has turned around, and the RSI is flat and nearly overbought. So. At this point, we need to pull back before we go higher. If you go higher, a break above 0 0.1450 will lead us all the way to these, this area at, at um, 0 0.1495 and then all the way to 0 0.1590. So, so I have been asked in the comment section whether or not I could add wheat to my analysis and I thought, why not? So let's see, I have technically never traded wheat and this is not a market that I look at, at, at any at ever, but uh, why not? So uh, wheat, we can just see here that it has, well, first of all, we can see that it has um, lows of around 497 and at this point uh, highs of around 613 and we can also see that we have rallied from the bottom here all the way to the top and at this point it was last it has to be last week um, it topped at 613 and at the moment we are basically in a pullback uh, this market is uh, it's fairly overstretched, so you can expect a pullback towards the 50 moving average. You can also see from the technical indicators that we were uh, almost nearly overbought when we started, when we reached the top here. 
And we since then have started this decline. And usually what happens, uh, you can see that it is, uh, has a resistance at the 50 moving average, uh, very similar to sugar and, and so on, is that you fall towards the 50 moving average and then you increase. At this point, it is not a good idea to enter this market. You most likely find uh, support also in this area here. As I can see that we have a, a double top here. So we can see that we are running in resistance to resistance due to these tops. But this move was fairly parabolical. So do expect this market to break through this resistance towards the 50 moving average. And at the technique for, for this kinds of trades is always to wait until you get towards the 50 moving average and then buy. You just, um, you technically get more value the lower this market goes. Um, it can rally from here. Um, one, probably the main reason why uh, weed has rallied so significantly is due to, uh, to temperature. It's very similar to natural gas and other is that when you have extreme temperature, then you have droughts and that also affects uh, the supply of weed and therefore prices go basically parabolic when that happens. Uh, so bad harvest, you see higher prices, higher prices. But at this point, we're running into the, to, uh, to support here. This will most likely break, will go towards the 50 moving average and then this will most likely bounce. A uh, break through the 50 moving average will open the door to the 200 moving average and after that to these lows again. So you could see this from another perspective is that we're trading in between these lows and these highs. And if that is the case, this is probably the best shorting position that you can basically get. But it is really risky because you can bounce from the 50 moving average or bounce just underneath this area. So hope you find this uh, analysis uh, helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing, hitting the subscriber button down here in the corner, hitting the like button because that uh, helps this channel grow due to the algorithm, algorithms of uh, YouTube. Basically this video and all other videos will uh, be more popular and therefore the channels will grow. And of course, hit the bell button in order to see our newest videos. So good luck and thank you very much.